So in chapter five, we're looking at the eukaryotic cells and microorganisms. And the first half of this chapter, we'll look at the eukaryotic cells and their structures. And you should be fairly familiar with that part since you have had anatomy and physiology or you've had some sort of uh, biology before you took this class. So this is why I like to start with chapter five when we do unit two. So the outcomes for this first section, we're going to be looking at the relationship between the archaea, the bacteria, and the eukaryotic cells, and that to the last common ancestor, and the theory of the endosymbiosis. So the first eukaryotic cells are estimated to have appeared on Earth two to three billion years ago, and the bacteria and the eukaryotes evolved from a precursor cell called the last common ancestor. And that last common ancestor was neither prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Um, it gave rise to the bacteria and the archaea and then the eukarya separately. And um, based on genetic evidence, it seems that the bacteria came first and then archaea and eukarya separated off. And so it's interesting because archaea means like, you know, it's referring to ancient and I think the original idea was that the archaea came first but in actuality it seems uh, to appear that the bacteria came first and that the archaea and eukarya are more closely linked so um, in terms of like cladograms and everything it seems that the bacteria then the archaea and then the eukarya developed. And the organelles that we see in eukarya came from either bacteria or archaea cells that became trapped in the eukaryotic cells. So you can see here, um, there's the last common ancestor. They think it had RNA and that somehow viruses developed. And, you know, this is all theoretical. I mean, and I don't know that what evidence they have that viruses were part of this, but it's possible that the viruses that were DNA may have invaded and they became then the primary uh, chromosomes. But they were taken up into or developed into these bacteria, archaea and bacteria cells. And the bacteria or archaea cells were taken up by a larger cell that was um, the eukaryotic cell that could main, mainly do like fermentation, wasn't able to do cellular respiration and it became the mitochondria and the ones that were photosynthetic they took up the bacteria or archaea that could do photosynthesis and then that became the chloroplast. So that's that's the idea of endosymbiosis and it does seem to have some merit because of the fact that the um, chloroplast and mitochondria both have uh, similar DNA, um, they have a single loop of DNA just like bacteria, and they have 70S ribosomes, which is something that is unique to bacteria. And we will talk about those differences when we get into chapter four in the next chapter. So uh, then the idea was that they became very specialized. The original cells were very independent and single celled but they became very specialized and functioned as a colony. And from the colonies, then they became, um, they lost the ability to survive on their own, which developed tissues and tissues formed organs and all that. But that's the idea. Um, so on the, the unicellular organisms were um, both, you can see that protozoans and algae, um, part of the protista kingdom, they're typically unicellular. And some forms of fungi are unicellular, like yeasts. Um, but fungi and algae can be unicellular or not really truly multicellular, but um, colonial is what algae would be. And fungi can have kind of a multicellular sort of um, arrangement in the hyphae, the, the mold form of fungi. So always multicellular, that would be the helminths. So the helminths have um, they're animals, and so they have a unicellular egg or larval form, but they become multicellular when they develop. So, and you started out as a single cell, as an egg, and um, 
fertilized egg and then developed into a multicellular. But anyway, always multicellular would be animals and plants and then fungi and algae have this kind of weird sometimes unicellular, sometimes multicellular. But protozoans are always unicellular. So the first concept check questions here, true or false, eukaryotes and prokaryotes evolved independently. And then the blank evolved from primitive cells that became trapped in larger cells. And then describe the difference between tissues and organs and then list three types of eukaryotes studied by microbiologists. So it appears that tr it is true that eukaryotes and prokaryotes evolved independently, that um, prokaryotes um, were engulfed by a, a eukaryotic cell, a primitive eukaryotic cell, and that developed the, the modern like eukaryotic cell that we have. Um, blank evolved from primitive cells that became trapped in larger cells, so eukaryotes. Um, would be the answer to that. And then tissues are groups of cells that work together to perform a specific function. And then organs are tissues, groups of different tissues that perform an overall function. And um, so organs consist of tissues, tissues consist of cells. And then the three types of eukaryotes we discussed were protozoans, fungi, algae, and then helminths or worms. So that is the end of section one.